I think we can load the first presentation, which will be given by uh, uh, Mr. Adeleke from the University of KwaZulu Natal. Then he will be speaking about applications of computational genomics in poultry and uh, ruminant health improvement. So please say uh, uh, the floor is yours. Right. Um, afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew, and I will be presenting uh, application of computational genomics in poultry and ruminant health um, improvement. Uh, I'm a geneticist and animal breeder by training, and um, specifically focusing on uh, poultry and also uh, small stock. I'm from University of Kwasulu Neta, and my research group is uh, quantitative and computational genomics. Uh, what do we do? have been carrying out a genetics-led research, particularly improving the performance of livestock. But it remains a problem in terms of infection disease, which causes uh, mortality in livestock. And uh, my main focus in area of uh, genetics of infectious disease, um, essentially some parasites. And uh, my group is looking at uh, two parasites essentially, uh, that's Toxoplasma condi and uh, Imeria. Um, Imeria causes uh, coccidiosis in livestock, primarily in poultry, which um, accounts for almost uh, $3 billion a year globally. And uh, this disease is actually a management disease because anywhere you have uh, poultry that you are managing, whether in small scale or intensive farming system, you always definitely have uh, this disease. Um, one of the challenges is that although there are anti that are used to treat this disease, but these parasites are actually developing resistance. And the second thing is that there is usually residue of this in meat products, which eventually find its way from farm to fur. So, and leads to uh, development of antimicrobial resistance. And there is uh, picking up of uh, virulent and resistant genes uh, from different points. So, we're trying to address this. And so, our project actually essentially uh, for this disease is to look at livestock sector. And we are trying to use genomic approach to collect. Uh, sample across um, the nine provinces in the country, which we started in 2018. Now, in 2018, one of our laboratory experiments actually indicated that um, one of the strains or species of this Imeria, which is Imeria mitis, was the most prevalent contrary to what happens in other countries. And that samples, those samples were actually from Pumlanga province. And so that's raised some questions and such that we need to do something about this because the molecular uh, diagnosis approach uh, seems challenging. And also if that is the most prevalent, then um, the treatment approach may not really be effective against that particular strain. While we look at these two parasites, um, there's another group, uh, GGB, in my department, that's also focusing on parasite or looks at malaria. Uh, when they re recognize that we are trying to um, 
use some computational approach to answer some biological questions. So we we'll approach because I'm also a co-investigator on that. And um, that's why you see malaria with uh, there. Now we are characterizing these um, parasites from different livestock system. And the aim is to develop sensitive molecular diagnostic technique. Um, in one of our findings, we noted that because there are three different uh, variants of this uh, parasite that are circulating um, in African countries, and also it has been detected in um, the UK, that's uh, OTUXYZ. Um, in 2018, we picked up OTUX from one of the samples. And, um, but when we mapped this to the genome, we were not really very sure. Uh, although from the wet lab, it actually indicated this parasite. So what then, what we did was to actually use the existing marker um, with my collaborator in the UK to look at um, this specific uh, parasite. And the samples from the UK, from US and Nigeria um, were used because new uh, marker was developed and tested on um, our sample. But before that, it was tested on uh, samples from the UK, US, and Nigeria. And the new marker that was developed actually picked up um, that Ameria mitis from those countries. Unfortunately, it didn't pick that of um, South Africa here. So that raised some questions about molecular diagnosis of this parasite. And that raised some questions and such uh, regarding this. Now, in that slide, then we are also looking at vaccine development because of resistance. So that's actually from two major goals of the first research focus in terms of uh, sensitivity of diagnosis uh, tool, as well as uh, vaccine development. Now, also with animals, because of the problem of um, antimicrobial resistance that many people are trying to look at, we are looking at how do we tackle this problem from animal point of view? Because we know that one of the major sources of antimicrobial resistance is uh, from livestock because in a way to control livestock diseases, you give them antibiotics. And um, this finds way to, and, uh, to human uh, food, in, even in the hospitals. So our approach here is to, see, to say that, okay, instead of giving um, antibiotics to livestock, are there other things that we could do to control uh, livestock uh, diseases? So, we're using a metagenomics approach, essentially to manipulate the rumen, that's uh, the stomach of the livestock. Well, what do we do is um, we have like five treatment groups. We have a group that, uh, that is given a diet that contains only antibiotics, uh, another group that has uh, probiotics only, another group that has combination, another group that doesn't have so, we have both uh, positive and negative control. And to actually look at the uh, diversity and also the abundance of the different microbes within the rumen. Um, so how does this um, work benefit uh, from CHPC? Why do we need as uh, CHPC resources. Um, the work on parasite, first of all, we want to, because we are looking towards vaccine development. So, and we don't want to waste resources. We don't want to waste time. We want to start from bioinformatics approach using immunoinformatics to actually screen down um, possible vaccine candidates which we can take to the lab, which another uh, group will be looking at. Uh, with that, we'll be able to uh, save time and save uh, resources. 
The second one on uh, metagenomics, uh, rumen microbiome, actually starts with the lab work. And then we hand that up with bioinformatics analysis, where we do uh, SNP calling and all that to look at the diversity and abundance of different uh, microbes. So these are um, some of the uh, facilities that we make use of um, in CHPC. Okay, so uh, because to process the data, we need high memory, um, RAM, and also uh, we can be running the jobs, okay, without uh, interruption, except uh, perhaps when there is no shading. Um, so then some of the software we use actually is uh, in two parts. Uh, the one that focuses on uh, uh, immunoinformatics and also those that we utilize uh, for metagenomics in rumen ecology. Um, we use uh, Python environment. Um, we I uh, use some of this uh, software uh, for docking and uh, also um, Sroginja and Autodoc. For molecular dynamics, we use uh, Hamba and Groomers. And then for metagenomics work uh, and also uh, SNP analysis, because uh, for this actually, apart from looking at diversity and the abundance of those different microbes, we are also trying to look at the uh, interaction between those uh, microbial contents and the genotype of, um, of the host. For example, uh, what happens if it is um, those microbes and the sheep, and also those microbes and goats, or those um, microbes in the gut with uh, poultry. So I want to say here that this uh, research group is relatively new and small. Um, we actually started in uh, 2016, but then it was in 2020 that I realized that we actually need to use uh, HPC. And as a result of that, um, I tried to assemble different uh, pe people with different expertise together. Um, although I was trained as a quantitative geneticist, um, but looking at genetics of infectious diseases across this, I need to assemble a um, team. And uh, on that team, I have uh, veterinarians, um, microbiologists, um, computational chemists, I also have statistician. I also have computer scientists, um, so that all of us put our um, expertise together to address some of these challenges. And so, um, CHPC has assisted us to have access, access to uh, good facilities, which uh, we cannot um, actually acquire on our own. Um, you know, I said we started using uh, CHPC uh, from 2020. So you know that uh, to start actually will be challenging actually. And so we um, started with training of our students, um, including uh, some of us as well. And um, as a result of this, uh, I want to say that CHPC has greatly assisted us. Um, with facilities and some of those workshops and the summer schools uh, that the um, that CHPC organizes. And as a result of this, I think um, between that 2020 and now, um, one postdoc has actually completed um, a year and has been able to um, generate some outputs. Uh, two PhD students already graduated um, that used CHPC facility, and two masters also, particularly during COVID, um, we had to change their project to computational analysis. And um, between 2021 and now, 
um, I think we've been able to produce about 12 uh, publications as a dozen uh, using CHPC um, facilities. And um, one of those master students actually just uh, published a paper in Frontiers in Immunology with impact factor of uh, 8.7, um, 86, um, without spending um, a cent on our own, all the resources from CHPC. Um, we had some conference uh, presentations as well, nas both national and international. And uh, this has actually reduced uh, time wastage and resources. Uh, now, this um, time wastage and resources actually is towards the uh, vaccine development because now from the papers we have published and the work done so far, we have now identified um, candidate vaccines, okay, or vaccine candidates, you may put it, which now those uh, in pharmaceutical sciences will now take forward to synthesize. And the next stage will then be that after uh, synthesizing that, we'll go to, to animal model so that we can actually see whether those things will elicit um, immune responses that is expected. And thereafter, we will uh, we'll go into trial. But beyond that, we are also looking at um, um, ultimately looking at, because this uh, coccidiosis affects both uh, animals that are managed intensively and also those that are managed extensively, smallholder farmers as well. And so because of uh, cold chain that the vaccines may not really be able to get to rural areas. So we're also looking at possibly um, getting this, um, synthesizing this eventually uh, through plants. That's uh, bow farming. So those are the layout of the work that we are doing. Well, we can say challenges, but I think this is more on the expertise. Um, when we started, it was quite challenging, but what we did was once a student is recruited, first of all, I make sure that um, they attend uh, training from CHPC. That's the first thing you must do, um, summer school and uh, all those uh, seminars, and that's really, really um, helped. And uh, also, um, we encountered some challenges in terms of uh, maybe error and all that, but I think CHPC has been very fantastic uh, to help, help Dex responding to us, to assist us to uh, resolve some of those uh, issues. Um, these are some of the um, output from uh, 2021 to um, current uh, time. Uh, we had publications on chicken. We have those ones on uh, rumen microbiome. Uh, one thing I need to say, apart from those uh, immunoinformatics that we have got some um, candidate vaccines that we take forward, is that for the rumen microbiome, we then find out that um, the application of probiotics actually lowered the abundance of pathogenic bacteria in the rumen, okay? So, and we also look at the growth performance of these animals and the pH, it's actually improved. So meaning that uh, if we use this to manipulate rumen livestock um, without using probiotics, we'll still get um, good performance of these animals and ultimately, will reduce the transmission of uh, virulent and resistant genes, which um, can get to human and become a uh, public health uh, threat. So um, these are some of the students uh, as well as uh, uh, the past students and those that are currently uh, with us that are utilizing CHPC um, resources. And these are um, some of my uh, partners. I also need to highlight here that the work on microbiome actually is uh, 
in collaboration with Agricultural Research Council here in Pretoria. That's where the animal facility actually uh, is. I will need to acknowledge um, CHPC, uh, Moses Koton. I think Moses Koton has been trying, almost uh, all my students have been um, funded by Moses Koton because um, the base uh, in KCDN and they are looking at um, providing solution to agricultural sector. Right, um, we need to thank ARC, uh, South African Medical Research Council on uh, uh, malaria projects and then RF. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the nice presentation. We have enough time for discussions, questions, and comments. I was wondering if with the bioinformatics code, some of the the like biology codes, whether they get better at checkpointing. So we may yeah, be able to just restart your job from where it ended off, or because there can be quite some long jobs sometimes in the field. Um, sorry, in terms of checkpointing um, for some of the codes, have they have any of them improved in that way? In terms of because there are many of the codes, there are some codes that don't checkpoint. You can't continue the calculation from if they fail or you run out of wall time or something? Well, um, sometimes we uh, experience that, um, but I think there is a way that um, the script is written such that um, if anything of such happen, then uh, we can continue, the, the job can continue to run. Uh, we, we factor that into the script. Okay, that's good because at one stage some of them needed very long hours and you know, keeping you know, or, you know, there was a fail there. Problem. Thank you. Uh, another question. Was it that too clear? Okay. All right, it's quiet. So it means we we are done. Thank you very much for being good audience. Can we give him a round of applause? So this is the talking. Thank you very much. <laughs>